morning and welcome to the Sunday service from Park Road Baptist Church. My name is Hilary and I am one of the music group. We as a family have many different Bibles in our household and this week I was drawn to the family Bible or the parents Bible and in particular to Psalm 149 which reads Shout praises to the Lord, sing him a new song of praise when his loyal people meet. People of Israel, rejoice because of your creator. People of Zion, celebrate because of your king. Praise his name by dancing and playing music on harps and tambourines. The Lord is pleased with his people and he gives victory to those who are humble. All you faithful people, praise our glorious Lord. Celebrate and worship. Praise God with songs on your lips and a sword in your hand. Take revenge and punish the nations. Put chains of iron on their kings and rulers. Punish them as they deserve. This is the privilege of God's faithful people. Shout praises to the Lord. Now, in these uncertain times, we haven't been able to meet in our church building, but we have been able to meet as a family, albeit in different places. We've been able to sing new songs. We've been able to dance. We may have even been playing the tambourine and definitely a sword has made an appearance. It's lovely to see all the different families taking part in our service. This pandemic has given us the opportunity to develop our worship. So let us give praise for this new style of worship and the opportunity to celebrate and worship our Lord. So let's start our worship today by singing two songs. Let our praise and Lord, I come before your throne of grace. Only, only 
grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder I behold your face. Singing what a faithful God have I. What a faithful God. children so she cried out to God and she said if you give me a son I will dedicate him to you and he will serve you for the rest of his life now there was a priest nearby called Eli and he heard Hannah's prayer and he said may God answer your prayers now God did answer Hannah's prayer and soon, soon late, some time later, she gave birth to a son and she called him Samuel. Now, when Samuel was a few years old, she took him to Eli and to the temple and he dedicated his life to God. Now, Hannah returned home and she had many more children. Now, one night, Eli was asleep and Samuel was sleeping in the temple and he heard a voice calling him, Samuel, Samuel. So he thought it was Eli. So he went into Eli and said, here I am. And Eli said, well, I didn't call you, go back to bed. A second time he heard the voice calling him, Samuel, Samuel. So he went into Eli and Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. Now a third time he had a call, Samuel, Samuel. So he went into Eli, here I am. And Eli said, but I didn't call you. And then he suddenly realized that it was God who was calling Samuel. So he told him to go back to bed 
and he told him what to say when God spoke to him. So God called Samuel again, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel this time said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, everyone knew that he was God's messenger. God used Samuel to share his plan for the nation of Israel. Samuel used God's words to tell the people what God was like. In John chapter 1 verse 1, it says that Jesus is the word, the son of God. And he told the world about his plan and shared what God is like.
to you. Do you know one of the greatest privileges that we can have is to spend time with our Lord in prayer. It's one of the the many things that God allows us to do with him. He hears all our prayers. He wants us to pray. So let's take some time during our service now to pray to our Lord Jesus Christ and remember all the many things that Um, are on our hearts and minds, the things that God wants to hear from us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we have this opportunity to come and to pray with you, to come and talk with you where you are. And Lord, we want to thank you and praise you that we have the, the Lordship over us of Jesus Christ. And he stands there and he listens to each of our prayers. Lord, in this strange world in which we live in, these times which are unprecedented, Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you want us to come to you to pray. Lord, our world is in turmoil. Lord, there are so many people around this globe that are suffering not just from COVID-19, but from poverty, from sickness, uh, from so many different things. And Lord, we pray that those that cry out to you will be heard and that you will answer their prayers in the best way possible. Lord, for those people closer to home, we pray for the families of the people that are still impacted by COVID-19, the people that are shut inside, the people that are in fear of going out. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the work that is done behind the scenes to keep in contact with those people, to help them to feel loved and cherished and not forgotten. Lord, we pray for those that are struggling without jobs, people that have lost their jobs because of this pandemic, companies that have ceased to trade because there's not been anything to trade. And Lord, we just pray for those people that are affected. We pray that they would find new jobs quickly and soon and that they would once again feel able to provide for their families. For those, Lord, that are shielding still, Lord, we pray that you would bless them, that they would find the things that will occupy their hearts and minds and avoid the things that will will drive them down into um, despair and, and doom, say. Father God, we pray for the politicians in our countries, the people that are seeking to do what is right. Lord, we pray that you would speak to them also and show them the way that they must go to include everybody in a recovery from this pandemic. And Lord, we also have to be mindful of uh, the powers that are at work Um, In other countries, uh, Lord, we pray for the election process in the United States. We pray that the right result would happen there and that uh, the next president of the United States would take the responsibility for forging forward and bringing a peace in this world that maybe has been missing till now. Lord, we pray for other powers like North Korea, um, Iran, um, and places like that that are still in conflict. We we think of Syria, we think of Israel and this peace accord that's uh, that's happened this week. Lord, we just pray that you would be in each of those situations and that you would make your glory known. For these things, Lord, we pray in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah. 
Baptist Church. I'm Peter, one of the members here, and I am in the church building, in the sanctuary part, which I can see from here has been set up for C19, with the way the seats are being configured, and in the entrance lobby there, where the receptionists will check you with hand gel and check you in, and uh, it really is quite a thing, where everybody has to wear face masks and you can't sing. And it just seems to be part of what we have to live with, a little bit frustrating. You know, we all have to wear these now around the shops. Got one of those and the hand gel is part of the daily routines. And the anti black we have to use with the food when it comes in the house, we spray it off and wipe it down. And we've got the gloves, which we have to use certain times. And that just seems to be what we have to do every time we go out. And a couple of weeks ago, it got really quite wet and got tired of this. You go down the shop, and all this. but we have to do it. But then I thought, well, I really feel for, say, the medics, you know, 10 out of 10 to them, and the chance and everybody, who have to wear these hours at a time. You know, I don't like wearing these for a long time, but hours at a time is, is quite a, a thing. And it is really quite wearing. And stressful, I should think. There's other things too I'm worrying about this situation. It's not just us here in Rushton, but it's throughout the world. All over the place you can talk to people from Australia or Korea. We all are having to live with and cope with the impact of this virus. And just this past week we've heard of the chaos with travel and people are having to come back from France. Early there's a cut-off point and you have to quarantine. Or the exam results and the terrible frustration around that, affecting lives. Uh, heads and things having to work out how schooling works and the new term of distancing. And how that all happens. And then you think, well, furrows in. There's jobs here. How are we going to cope? There's so many unknowns. We don't know. And it's all very much sort of, phew, it can be overwhelming. And it's a bit like all these anxieties and worries and things, it's like this massive bag. It's not just the worry, it's the weight of it. This is really heavy. That's because it's full of bricks. Oh, it's 
so heavy. And the difficulty is then for carrying this bag and our consciousness, the screen of our consciousness is just the things that are difficult with the news. That can really wind us down. But what we want to do is bring Jesus into the picture and learn how to keep him there and work things through with him and have him as uh, that governing perspective. Now he says some great words, there's some really good news, and these words are for everyone who is weary and burdened. And that may well be you today. These things get to me as well, all of us, and millions of people around the world. And he said these words, Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now this is such good news. We can come to him and he'll give us rest. And why do we do that? Well, he's the Saviour. He's also the Lord, and you remember from Psalm 121, it starts off by saying, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What an ally to have on your side. And he's not just powerful, but he's the good shepherd. He knows you, he knows you and me more than we know ourselves. He knows how to work things out for good, for good and he knows just how to tend us. He restores my soul. He gives us rest. He restores my soul. And he loves us. That's what's so special. He gave his life for us. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. The Apostle Paul said, The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's very personal. It's very tender. Now in this bag, some of the things in there can be our sin. It's not just the circumstances that can affect us and worry us or people or situations and other ones. We're not well kind of thing. But can our sin. Just so glad for those words in 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Let's say this. He himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die for sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you've returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Your safekeeping, tending, guidance, leadership, everything for our good. Now that is amazing. Come to me. Now this will be very heavy. Years ago, when I was a young person, last millennium, did a scout hike. We had one of these on my back all day. We camped out and, and oh, just to put that down was tremendous. We can come and lay our burden at Jesus' feet. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So I'll do this to the Lord. Come. Oh. What a relief. Such a relief. And then he refreshes us the Holy Spirit. So the relationship with Jesus as we come to him and connect with him is incredibly personal. To press into him and know him more. It's very powerful. All authority in heaven and earth is his. And he is with us always. And it's a very refreshing relationship. He wants to take us, those things all off us, and then give us his goodness and life and his peace, and his joy, and his rest. And do we need that? I do, daily. And thankfully, we can all come. Perhaps now, we'd just like to have a little prayer and give things over to the Lord in the way you've just shown me that way. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can come to you and that you will give us rest. And it's to anybody Wherever we're at, um, 
UK, Rushton, wherever in the world we can come to you. Thank you that you are so great, so powerful, you're all present. Wherever we are, we can come to you, you're with us, and offload things to you. Because you care for us. So we just lay these things at your feet, all the things that concern us, and leave them with you, and leave ourselves with you, and place ourselves in our hands, and our situations this week. And ask you please to refresh us, and strengthen us, for today and tomorrow, and through the coming days. Thank you, Lord. But you love us. You love me. In your name. Amen. Well, we've looked at that wonderful start to the reading of how Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But then he went on to say, Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So we need to take, as we come to Jesus and lay everything at his feet, he wants us to take up his yoke. And it's his way of saying, be his disciple, follow me. And this is what we need to do in coming under his tuition, under his lordship. He wants to teach us uh, to learn how to live, how to pray, how to live a Christian life, not just in this life, how to get through life, but also that has impact for the life to come as well. So he said, take my yoke upon you. It's a bit like we need to follow the maker's instructions. He's given us so much in the Bible for our good, and we need to learn from that. And one of the things I've been learning in lockdown is that I've got a new phone, and it means I can now do a bit of WhatsApp learning, and I uh, did a little video with Jean the other day to send something off to a granddaughter. And it really was L plates time. And we've got one of those in a minute. And then I wanted to learn it with Messenger. Use a Messenger send it off. And then I wanted to see if I could transfer it from the phone onto my laptop. And there's a little cable you can do for that, which I've got. Put it in. Like that. Didn't work. So I fiddled with uh, How do you know? Fiddle with the laptop. Uh, didn't work. I got frustrated. And then I had a brilliant idea. I thought, I'm going to read the manual. Now maybe it's a bloke thing. I don't know. Simon Cowell said a couple of weeks ago he had an accident on his own gizmo. He broke part of his back, I think. To other men, men, to read the instructions. It's typical of us to try and do it first and then read the instructions. And what I did? Oh. Video. How to transfer it. To that. I went, oh, that's how. Oh, well, I don't know how that's straightforward. I'm going to do this. Oh, it's a permission problem. Oh, right. Okay, so, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it did. Try. It worked. That's amazing. Follow the instructions. And for us, too, as people, we're sometimes we're so slow to follow the maker's instructions. It tells us all these things. good. It is our good. Trust in the Lord to love one another. All these wonderful things he teaches. So of course you need to listen. And we learn by listening. And, um, and it is learning, isn't it? I've got these L-plates here. And we make mistakes as well. We learn from those. But an L-plate, we've all got them on. I'm still learning things too. Even at my youthful age, yes, I should have got this next thing. But never mind. Learn, but it's also L. It means love. And although we're very imperfect, obviously, the Lord is perfect, he loves us perfectly, which is amazing and constantly. And it's also red, which reminds us of the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin. You know, we all make mistakes, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanses from all unrighteousness. And the white stands for the righteousness of Christ that he gives us by faith. In him. Now that's amazing. So Jesus said, Take my yoke and learn from me, and went on to say, For I am gentle and humble in heart. You think of you as harsh and cruel, but he's not, he's gentle, he's patient, he's humble. When I was learning to drive as a 70 year old, my instructor was a police instructor, and I needed someone who's going to be firm with me, just that's what I needed. Here we see Jesus, he's very gentle, and I'm glad he is. 
because there's times he knows we're fragile and sensitive. He's close to broken hearted. And it's like a child, you know, if they've got tears. Which parent, who of us, will try and wipe away the tears with a brillo pad? And Jesus is very gentle. So is the Holy Spirit. Gentleness is one of the fruits. And in being close to Jesus, that catches off on us, it rubs off on us, and fills us, and infuses us with his life as we pair with him. He doesn't send us emails or teach us distance learning from the other side of the universe. He's with us always to help us and guide us every single day, 24-7. You can wake up in the night, call out, he's there. How do I get through this? What do I do? As we yield and learn, fills us and shows us a word of wisdom, something, sometimes through other people help us. But he'll help us through. Learn from me. And so you'll find rest for your souls. And he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's a good fit. He customises what he do, does for each one of us to the unique individual and gifting package that all of us are. Now in terms of humility, now I've got this olive wood carving, it's a, a really beautiful picture of Jesus washing Peter's feet. And if you think about this, it's quite a stunning image from John 13. How the Lord Almighty, the author of life, humbled himself, the servant king, saw the need, somebody else should have, the servant should have washed feet, it was customary in those days for that to have happened. And the disciples, one of them should have picked up on the job very most menial of tasks for these occasions. But Jesus saw the need, took a towel, wrapped it around himself, and he went round and washed the disciples' feet. Isn't that amazing? Disciples, very imperfect creatures. Here, the Lord of glory, perfect. Maker washes the feet. King washes the feet of his subject. It's amazing, not just for show, but genuinely. And to show his gentleness, feet are a very sensitive part of the body. Many people don't like them being touched, but he's very carefully washes his feet. Peter may have thought, oh, I feel embarrassed, I should have done this. Lord, you, do you wash my feet? When I say, Lord, wash my feet, who am I? Who am I? But he said, unless I wash you, Peter, you'll have no part of me. Peter characteristically then said, well, not just then my feet, but every part of me, head to toe. And it's a picture, of course, of the washing of sins that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross through his shed blood and dying for us, rising from the dead and pouring out the Holy Spirit to regenerate us and make us new. It's an amazing picture, isn't it, of humanity. He went on to say, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. So he set us an example that we should follow in his steps. Now a little later in the upper room, you know, in terms of finding that rest for our souls and yielding, Jesus went on to say some astonishing words for, for all the times that people have lived in, wherever we are. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And we can take heart because he said, I am with you always. We are joined with him day by day. The good shepherd is, he knows how to navigate you through today and tomorrow. And he wants us all to learn from him, not just to go through the storm and survive it, but to grow through it. So we can ask the question, what, Lord, can I learn from this situation that will help me build back better? To grow stronger in you, to grow closer to you, to become more like you, to reflect you more and engage with those around you with your life and your love and your encouragement. Of course, I need your wisdom and help for daily living. Help me, Lord. And he knows that need. But teach me too, please, today. So that the situation we find ourselves in all of us can be used for good purpose to grow in the Lord. Not just to go through the storm, but to grow through the storm. 
And perhaps today what we can all do is come afresh to Jesus' feet. Not just to offload things, you receive his peace, but to say, Lord, please, teach me, help me, to learn to become like you. Please fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit that helps make that yoke easy and burden light. The Holy Spirit makes us holy because he's the Holy Spirit. Love and joy and peace and gentleness. Each day he teaches us. Sometimes we have to go over it and learn again and again. But he's there patiently. Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.16, unlimited patience. So here we are, let's come fresh. Let's learn our lives at his feet. And walk with him through today and tomorrow. And let's give the days to him. Because he's faithful, he's with us always, and he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And so we say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Take heart, he said. I've overcome the world. He's for us and will help us. As we come and yield fresh to him daily, because he's with us always. That's fantastic, isn't it? For me, that's such an encouragement. My prayer for all of us is we would know that growingly, but also reminding ourselves of the words of the grace, which I'll share with you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.